surprise. The preparation of this snack, which we're used to seeing in red boxes, begins at the factory long before it's served. The potatoes come here already sorted by size. The first step of the production is a machine wash. Then the potatoes are sent for peeling. Small batches of tubers end up in a special drum with ribbed sharp walls. The potatoes are evenly peeled while they rotate inside. Cutting each potato takes just a few seconds thanks to these grates, through which the tubers are pushed. Next, the potatoes are sifted so that short and uneven pieces are removed from the batch. Then, the batches are treated with dextrose, a natural sweetener that gives them the characteristic golden color when fried. Also, the fries are treated with sodium pyrophosphate to preserve their bright color during the shipping stage. Next, the potatoes are fried until half-cooked, then frozen and packaged. These are the packages that are sent to the restaurants. The shelf life of these frozen potatoes is 12 months, but because of the high demand, they're cooked much earlier. At the restaurant, all the employees have to do is dip the fries in hot oil for three minutes to cook them to perfection and then sprinkle them with salt. Chicken Nuggets Despite many myths, the preparation of nuggets begins with whole chickens. During the first step, the breasts are separated from the carcasses to become the main ingredient. After sorting, the cleaned meat is sent to a meat grinder, where it's chopped and mixed with spices. Interestingly, at this same stage, a small amount of chicken skin is added to the mixture, which gives the finished dish a richer flavor. The resulting meat is soft and pliable, which allows a special machine to turn it into nuggets of four different shapes. The pieces are transported on a conveyor belt to a special station where they're coated with two layers of batter. The first is light and the second is much thicker. Here at the factory, they call it tempura batter. Next, the nearly finished nuggets are fried, but only the batter hardens while the meat stays raw. That's because the last production process in the factory is freezing. The final preparation of the nuggets is done in the chain's restaurants. Beef patties As in the previous cases, the preparation of beef patties does not begin in the restaurant, but in a factory. As a rule, two types of meat are used – refrigerated local meat and frozen meat imported from countries where meat is cheaper, such as Brazil. The first step is a careful inspection. Each batch undergoes quality control and is run through a metal detector. Cartilage and sinews are also removed from the meat, something that can fall into the batch accidentally during deep boning. Frozen and chilled meat is mixed and then processed with a meat grinder. It is designed so that at the same time, it removes pieces of bone from the minced meat, which could accidentally enter the mass. The resulting raw material is then sent to the molding machine, which extrudes patties on a conveyor belt. Interestingly, nothing else is added to the meat, not even spices. The formed patties undergo shock freezing. The temperature is drastically reduced to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. This preserves the texture and the flavor. Frozen products are distributed to restaurants where they're fried, seasoned, and become parts of the burgers. Burger buns. It all starts with flour, water, liquid yeast, and salt. These ingredients are mixed until a homogeneous soft dough is formed. Then the mass rests in a special room for four hours. During this time, it produces gluten, a porous structure is formed, and the surface layer becomes elastic and smooth. This dough is ready for further processing. Sugar, salt again, Yeast, water, and preservatives are added to it. The mass is thoroughly mixed and then divided into portions, balls, which later become buns. Next, each piece is dipped in flour, rests for three minutes, and then goes to proofing and spends 55 minutes at 104 Fahrenheit and 90% humidity. In the next step, the buns are glazed, 
sprinkled with sesame seeds, and sent to the oven. This time for 8 to 9 minutes at 464 Fahrenheit. After the cooling process, which lasts 27 minutes, the buns are ready to be cut, packed, and transported. Coffee Now we're going to talk about Powlig, a company that's been one of McDonald's coffee suppliers for about 20 years. The production process begins with the coffee berries. They are harvested from all over the world. These, for example, come from Spain. The berries are dried for 21 days, then peeled off to produce coffee beans. Now only the raw material goes to the factory, where it first undergoes a thorough quality check. This is followed by another stage of cleaning, this time of any debris that may have gotten into during manual collection. Different sorts of coffee are cleaned and stored separately. Then, specialists mix them according to a special recipe to achieve a particular flavor. The blend is roasted in an oven for 12 minutes at 428 Fahrenheit. To prevent the beans from burning, the mass is then sprinkled with cold water, which instantly stops the thermal processes. This is followed by processing in a mill, which is a giant coffee grinder. After a final quality check, the coffee is ready for transport and brewing. Filet fish Freshly frozen cod and haddock are used for McDonald's fish patties all over the world. The video shows the aspersum plant, which fishes in the Barents Sea. The factory receives the fish meat in rectangular blocks. It's already boned and skinned. Each block is cut into 150 portions. Each of them, moving on a conveyor belt, is first covered with a layer of batter, and then with a layer of breading. Then they're frozen and are ready to be transported and cooked in the restaurant. A work cycle takes exactly 8 minutes and 38 seconds. Ketchup Heinz has been the major supplier of ketchup to McDonald's for 40 years. And now we'll show you exactly how their factory processes work. The company plants, grows, and harvests the tomatoes itself. The ripened vegetables are crushed and boiled to evaporate excess moisture. This is how tomato paste is made, which is later used to make ketchup. Its parameters, such as color, taste, and composition, are carefully controlled. Next, an extract derived from spicy herbs, hot peppers, and vegetables is added to the tomato paste. Other necessary ingredients are salt, sugar, vinegar, and water. All of these products are thoroughly mixed. Then the mass is pasteurized and passed through a homogenizer, a machine which grinds the raw material and makes it homogenous and dense. The ready ketchup is then packed into bottles and plastic sauce pots. Coke. The preparation of this popular drink is a much simpler process than it might seem at first glance. Water is simply mixed with a pre-made thick syrup. The preparation of the latter is the story we save for last. It's produced by special factories, which then distribute it around the world. Sugar syrup is mixed with citric acid, vanilla, lime juice, and caffeine in a special huge vat. The last ingredient is a trade secret, but its many ingredients are known. They are a variety of oils like orange, cinnamon, lemon, and nutmeg oils. The water, which is mixed with syrup, first undergoes several complex stages of purification. The last step in the production of Coca-Cola is the carbonation of the drink. <laughs> 